Er, so I picked up a new knife. I uh, recently had a inkling to upgrade from my previous favorite knife. Johnny Post Production will hook us up. This is Zero Tolerance. Zero two zero zero ST. Outstanding. I love it. Throw up the specs as well. Uh, it's a four inch blade. That one has G10 handles. 3D machined to have very aggressive grips uh, and it weighs about seven ounces which I love I love the heft of it uh, it just feels great in the hand and it feels like it's up for anything but uh, it is 154 cm steel 154 cm steel is basically a beefed up 440 C with uh, believed to be ceramic to make it more corrosion resistant and uh, a little bit more durable, a little tough. So I was researching around and I came across the CPM S30V steel and uh, it is outstanding. It's basically noted to be like the end all be all of knife blades in a particular price point, one that I would be prone to purchasing. So I'm extremely motivated with this knife, but we'll start with the blade. And this is a 3.5 inch blade, but we'll touch upon that again a little later on. So we did lose a half inch, but I'm not too concerned about it. So the blade is CPM S30V. So CPM is Crucible Particle Metallurgy. So yeah, I had to look it up too. But uh, Crucible is basically, uh, it's a proprietary method to infuse or precipitate uh, alloys into the S3V steel. So they introduced the vanadium alloy. And uh, basically you think of vanadium as uh, rocks and concrete. So it immensely increases the toughness of this knife. But even more fascinating than that, how it's made. So basically the CPM S30V is not processed the same way normal alloys, normal steel uh, is done, i.e. molten to ingot. Uh, it's basically forced through a cone, which has pressurized gas uh, breaking the falling molten material and creating droplets, basically like micro ingots. It's casted into droplets coming out and that in turn is collected underneath. And going forward from there, it is brought over to the hip, which is hot isostatic press. That's basically like deep down in the earth, you know, the fucking pressure and the heat. It compacts all those individual nodules, spheres of finely grained, evenly dispersed, homogeneous uh, droplets and that creates the body or the stock with all the alloy material evenly dispersed. And there you go. It's from there they can make outstanding quality blades. So let's move on from the blade to the insanely unique action that caught my attention with this knife. I was originally looking for an automatic out the front or just an out the front in general, but here in Connecticut, you're not allowed to carry it. So even if I did buy it and I was looking at Asheville Steel, which is Asheville Steel Paragon Knives, uh, I was looking on Blade Ops and Blade HQ just at them in general because they make affordable out the front automatic knives and I came across this guy which apparently is brand new and out fucking standing so Johnny Post Production will hook us up with a little of the action so you don't see my crazy hands playing around just yet yeah see look at that that is outstanding so okay here comes the crazy hands so again you have the G10 button on the top and bottom portion okay so you just press in both and the whole handle 
separates. Kind of re reminiscent of like Robocop. Dude's gun just pops out of his leg. Pop! Fucking sweet as that. So it's not spring assisted. It's not spring loaded. So it can't be classified as an automatic. So it's still a push button. Look at that. And now we touch upon the blade. So yeah, we did lose a half inch, but this knife is a double edged dagger style blade. It's basically got three and a half more inches, three inches more. I just did marine math. So this is a double ground, double edged dagger style knife. And you got right on the medium ridge, I think that is outstanding. You got a blood groove. How sweet is that? It is just an all around great knife. So I think I've motivated you enough because I'm surely motivated as fuck. Let's go down to the handle. The handle is a 6061 T6 aluminum. That's aircraft aluminum. That in 7075 is primarily used for aircrafts. But this is anodized dark earth with the G10 button and beautiful grooves for grit, for texturing. And the interior of the handles are symmetrical to the blade design. So when it seats both open or closed, it seats superbly. So the blade in the locked position has two tang mounted pins. Johnny Post Production will hook us up with a video of that. Better close up. See, there you go, the tang mounted pins. And there's a female end on each side of the handle. So it locks very secure in the hand. But as you can see, when it in the open position, this nice and tight, nice and tight lock up on this thing. And the handle is extremely comfortable. And uh, Johnny Post Production will evidence that this guy sits comfortably low in the pocket, being that the clip is pretty much close to the tip. So it sits nice and deep, barely shows. And I can't say enough about this knife. I mean, I could sit and bullshit about this knife for quite a bit. So, uh, basically, in summary, uh, I really dig the butterfly knives. And those are basically the strongest folding knife you could buy. The locking system, you cannot beat. And this guy is kind of mimetic to that, being that it locks in the up position via tang pins to the frame. So, I can't ask for anything more. This is by far my favorite knife and probably will be just due to the uniqueness of design I mean uh, if you're in the market definitely check out Paragon Knives I mean very creative fuckers over there Err.